What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on y'all so we are back again um just coming through oh with everything that's been going on this is just a little escapism from reality uh, i'm gonna try to make it as best as i can if loving you is wrong season five episode 10 taken okay so let's just get into this episode we're gonna go person by person because that's easier for me to remember a lot of stuff really wasn't that important but it was cute. It was good. Okay. So basically, let's just do Alex. Okay. We're going to do Alex first. Listen, Alex. Oh, baby girl. Baby girl. Did your mama. Well, never mind because your mama, you know, she. I ain't even trying to, you know, she country hick and all that stuff. And they ain't got no manners and all that. So uh, I was about to say, didn't your mama ever teach you not to take drugs or anything from strangers? But. Alex is so far out her mind. She's drunk. Now she's high as hell. Okay. And she up here so high like, oh my God, oh, where am I? What is this? Girl, it's your hands, bitch, your arms. Okay. That's what it is. Girl, she's so out of it. She don't know where she at. She don't know what her name is. She don't know nothing. By to the Johnny, you know. He up there trying to stay with her, whatever, get her up out of there. And then here come this other dude. And I said, who is you? Girl, he said, um, you know, she on the menu. You know, I want to get this one. He said, I want her. I said, I want to, what? What? What's going on right about now? Girl, he said, listen, um, Miss Thing right here ain't on the menu. She a good girl. She don't need to be doing all that or whatever. He was like, listen, I'll give you $300 for her. I said, wait a minute. What's happening? Girl, that transaction kept on going up. He really wanted Alex. I said, so you'll be running a whole bar out here. Now, listen, you got to do what you got to do, okay? But I am not here for, um, you know, men putting women in sex, you know, pimping women out or whatever. If a woman or a man want to go out there and sell their body on their own accord, that's to them, and I give them all the power to that. But when men or whoever want to take control of a woman or a man and make them go out there and do this shit and pimp them, that is where the fuck I draw the goddamn line, okay? I said, what is happening here? I said, that's why you wanted her to get so drugged up, bitch. What the fuck? And then trying to act like, do you, okay, put it in the comments. Do you feel like Johnny, the bartender, really was trying to, um, you know, have Alex back by, you know, telling him the um other guy, no, she ain't, she ain't on the menu. This ain't no girl. This a good girl. She not one of the girls that I used to give out to you, whatever. Or do you feel like he was doing that on purpose just so that the price can jack up? Because every time he told, um, oh boy, no, nah, she a good girl. No, nah, she ain't one of the other girls or whatever. He kept putting the price up top and top. He went from three hundred to four thousand dollars for Alex. I said, "Bitch, what? You ain't even test the merchandise yet, and you not already gone up to the price." I said, "Which four thousand dollars for some poon? Okay." I said, "Uh uh, no." And I said, "Johnny, you messed up because he's that money talks. Okay, money talks and morals walk. Okay, and that's what just happened." He said, give me that money. Dude threw the money over there and took Alex. Okay, Alex is so out of it. I said, see, Alex, now, on the one hand, I could be like, listen, Esperanza was right. Girl, you don't know what's going to happen. But everybody was right on that. But at the same time, I know Esperanza was trying to be a friend and trying to get her friend into safety and get her to do what she needed to be done or whatever and, and come back to the fold or whatever. But at the end of the day, like everybody keep on saying, Natalie keep on saying, Stevens keep on saying, Alex is going to do what Alex wants to do, okay? And she's a grown woman, and she has to do that shit herself, all right? You can't force somebody to say, do nothing because I feel as though if they would have forced Alex to stay home, she would have found a way to get out. As drunk and as fucked up as she was, she would have found a way to um, get out, you know? And I think things probably would have been a little bit worse. Um, she would have got herself in some real, uh, well, she's about to get herself in some danger, but she would have got herself in some danger that she probably wouldn't have been able to come back from. Okay. That's how I feel. You know, I be looking at all these type of shows that be doing shit like that. And you know, these little crime shows and shit like that, you know, so your mind just get, you know, running and all this shit, like all these different scenarios and stuff. And I was like, damn, Alex, you really finna go out like this. This is fucked up. All right. Um, speaking of Alex. 
we got Ian coming over there to, um, you know, last week he came over there looking for Alex and Brad confronted him. You think that this is your baby. Okay. And I was just like, Brad, you know, this whole time he was like, get a DNA test and we can find out if, um, you know, you the baby daddy or whatever. So Ian comes over there. He's still looking for Alex or whatever, but Alex still ain't home. And he talking to Marcy and Brad. Brad getting all up in his feelings. Oh, so you was up here fucking a married woman or whatever. I mean, you ain't know she was married. You 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 ain't know this or whatever. I mean, y'all meeting up in the hotel in the middle of the day and all this stuff. And he was like, "You need to calm down and you need to listen to me, okay?" I did not know that Alex was married. Hell, I didn't even know that her name was Alex. She told me that her name was Jennifer. That's all I would have needed to know and, and understand to believe him, okay? Because, listen, why would you go out of your way to tell me some other alias, all right? Obviously, you keeping secrets, and that should have been enough for Brad to be like, okay, yeah, he's telling the truth. It had to take Marcy to say, I believe him, Brad. Calm the fuck down. I said, Brad... First of all, I know you and your feelings because cause at first I was about to say, now Brad, the bitch is gone, okay? Y'all not married no more, so why you up in your feelings about it? Then I had to remember, all of this stuff transpired while they were married. So, you know, that's that residual hurt, okay? It's all coming down like you just realizing that the life that you spent with this person is a lie, okay? It was a lie. It wasn't the fairy tale. It wasn't, you know, the cookie cutter life that you thought that you had. It was a lie, you know? And so, at this point, Ian was like, listen, just, listen, I can do the DNA for the boy, um, and it won't hurt. Just take a little swab from his, um, his cheek or whatever. And, um, <laughs> Marcy was like, do you want to see him? Now, baby, I'm so glad I had my subtitles up on my TV because I could have sworn, and I had to rewind a couple of times. I said, did she say what I think she said? Girl, I thought he said, I thought, um, Marcy said, do you want to see it? I said, hold up, you're not calling the baby a it, are you? That's what we won't be doing. But no, she said him. I was like, okay, cool. So, earlier in the episode, we're going to put a pause on Ian right quick. Earlier in the episode, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. No, it's not. Well, yes, it is because this particular part is funny. You know, um, Lil Tracy or Tanya, that's her name. These T's, okay? Tanya out here losing her goddamn man because uh, 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 Randall then gave her a powerful hallucinogenic, okay? That's what she, he didn't probably gave her, some drugs, you know? And he out there, everybody out there trying to figure out what's wrong with her. Benny come out there trying to figure out what's wrong with her, trying to get her back in the house, saying, you know, she has her episodes, but she's never had it this bad before, okay? Randall come over there antagonizing the whole situation and, you know, being an asshole, talking about some, you know, you probably need to get her into a hospital and I know where to work. And they was like, give me some water, give me some water for her. Imagine Natalie, Lucian, and Kelly and all of them out there, Brad and Marcy finally come out there. When they was about to go get some water, Kelly was like, I'll go get some water. Now, when she turned around and saw Alex, I mean, um, Natalie, Natalie kind of moved back like, bitch, don't touch me. And I said, you know what, Natalie, we are not about to do this. Okay, we are not about to do this. And I'm going to put a pause on Natalie because Natalie got on my nerves this episode. Um, And so at this point, <laughs> when Natalie, uh, Kelly come back out with the water, you know, they trying to get Tanya to drink it. And of course, Randall just, you know, taunting it on. Oh, that's not going to help. You need to call the ambulance. You need to do this. You need to do that. And woo, woo, woo. Next thing you know, Benny popped his ass, okay? Punched him dead in the face and knocked him out KO, okay? One hit a quitter up in his piece. I said, that's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Now, I would have preferred it be... Let me stop. I'm not going to do that, you know. It's... <laughs> We can't make everything racial. <laughs> I was about to go. Some... <laughs> I was about to say something that probably would have sound. Bitch, no. It is what it is. Because it don't matter what color it was. He did messed up with everybody, okay? And I feel like everybody deserves to. They should have just stood around and whooped his ass right then and there, okay? As soon as they knocked him out. I don't. At this point in time, you know, I, I make exceptions to, to the rule that I be setting for myself and my own morals, okay? Because I can't stand Randall. I would have been like, go ahead and have a fun time on his ass. Knock him out some more. Kick him. Everybody get a lick in. Everybody go down and get a lick in. Just one so he can stay to sleep. 
Oh, they ain't need to do that. They ain't need to do that because Randall was out there asleep on the line for a long ass time. Okay, a long time. All right. Um, to the point that Ian came over there to his house, and he saw him laying. And he when he parked over there, he was like, "Wait a minute! First of all, you're not even at your house. What are you doing out here?" He had to wake him up. Okay. And let me tell you something. I don't know how long um Randall was laying out there cold, okay, knocked out cold. But by the time he actually got up, he was still feeling the side effects of being hit in the face, okay. Brother couldn't even walk on his own. Brother said, listen, the thing is spinning. It's spinning, bitch, okay. You know, so Ian take him over there to his house and he see the stuff on the wall. He's showing him the, um, you know, the footage or whatever. And he talked about some, that man attacked me and the whole neighborhood didn't even do anything. They just stood up there and watched when he said that. And he was like, I don't know why they didn't step in. I mean, I'm a good guy. I said, no, the heck you didn't just say that you a good guy. No, you didn't let them words come about your mouth. Okay. But anyway, he talked about something. He wanted to sue um, uh, Benny and all this shit. Larry already know what the deal is. Larry said, well, what exactly did you do? Well, what exactly did you do? Okay, because I know you had to do something. People don't just come out the blue and then start messing with you. You got an issue with messing with other people. Larry said, we'll do what you need to do or whatever, but okay, fine. When he get through with um Ian, I mean, um... Randall, he comes outside. Ian is coming outside from Brad's in them house at the same time. And it was like, you know, chatting it up or whatever, sizing each other up. And, of course, Larry just be so cool as a cucumber. Like, he really think he's untouchable. Okay? Because Ian is like, listen, I'm preparing a lawsuit. You need to read the letter that I wrote or whatever that's going on the record that I'm sending to the bar, to the DA, to this, to that. And he, um, Larry wasn't phased back. Okay? I said, Larry got some brass balls. Okay? And, you know... I was like, Larry, you really cute. I said, Ian, you kind of cute too. I said, I don't want the brothers to be going against each other like this. Can we make a peace treaty or something? Like, it's a lot that's cool on it's a lot that's cool on it. And it's been cool on this whole week. And it is, has my emotions. Let me tell you something. I had a fucking breakdown yesterday. Okay. Girl, and I was on the phone talking to somebody, and I had a breakdown yesterday on that damn phone. Okay, when I tell you tears and every fucking thing, I mean, it, girl, that was my break. I just, everything that was, whew, I'm sitting here like, we don't need all this. I don't even know why I told y'all that, but I just had to put that out there. It's okay to just break sometime, okay? Like, we be holding it all up in and all this stuff that's been going on this week. It's just been very emotional or whatever, plus on top of the fact that, we still got this virus still out here and people acting like it ain't here no more. I said, girl, y'all out here with no mask on. Come on now, sis. Okay? And then you probably got your own personal issues and stuff that's going on. Oh, my God. It just it just came out yesterday while I was on the phone with somebody. It was needed. It was needed. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I just had to put that in there. Somebody needs to hear that. It's okay to just break. It's okay to cry. Okay? You know. It's okay. <laughs> I got to get y'all a lesson sometime, some way. But anyway, moving on from that, let's just get back on Kelly and um Natalie's situation because it irked my spirit. It irked my spirit in a way that I feel like Santana, oh, saucy. Santana and his, we ain't even finna do that. We're not finna do that. We're not finna do that. But um, <laughs> it irked my spirit because I was like, Natalie, I don't understand where you're coming from. Somebody in the comments was saying, basically, like, she tired of Kelly and all that stuff. And I was like, she didn't do nothing for Kelly. Okay? What did she do? The only thing that she did for Kelly was keep her son for a few days. A couple of days. I don't even think it was a full last week that she had the boy. You know what I'm saying? So, because you know how this, the, 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 the story, like, literally, one episode, one whole season be like a whole couple of days. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just sitting here like, what? Do you, well, a few days, i say that. I say probably a few days, probably less than a week. She didn't have the boy, okay? And it's just like, what are you getting in your feelings? And she was, uh, so what is she tired of, okay? You are a friend. You're supposed to come through for her like she comes through for you or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And prior to this, y'all was good. But then you sit there and you let 
Eddie get into your head, which I just don't understand. You know how much of an a-hole he is. You know how dirty he is. You know he don't get along with Lucian. You know he don't get along with you. So why is it that you will sit here and allow him to show you something out of context and then not let Lucian speak on what it is or, you know, not believe him when he say there is absolutely nothing going on with me and Kelly. Okay. And then when Kelly tried to say the same thing and she came to her, oh, excuse, she, excuse me, very sympathetic and everything. And very, I would say genuine. She came to her and she was just telling her, listen girl, I know you saw the video. Yeah, I saw it. Ain't nothing going on between me. And her. Okay. Listen, good. Whatever. Uh, if you say so. It was like, I was just, I, I just want you to know, I'm not sleeping with Lucian. Nothing ever happened. And I know you saw the kiss or whatever. It was just because I was excited. And I get it. I would have understood that. Okay? That's my homegirl. And I understand, you know, we had the um, Alex and Marcy situation. But them two wasn't really good girlfriends like that. They weren't good girlfriends and close as long as a Kelly and Natalie. And Natalie would beat their ass, okay? And everybody know that. So they made it seem like Natalie was the big bad wolf. So of course ain't nobody gonna cross Natalie in this situation. But we know some people have crossed the line in friendships or whatever. But I don't see Kelly doing that. And we don't see Kelly doing that. So Natalie, the we and, and, and most importantly, you should have trust your man who is the only good man on this goddamn block. You know what I'm saying? And she acting like you know, Natalie really slept with him while she was up in jail. The whole time she was up in jail. Like, this thought never came up into your mind up until she was up in, um, while she was in jail, she was fucking around with Lucia. I mean, con I mean, people do stuff. Okay, Andrea and Lamar from Love After Lockup was fucking up in the goddamn, um, in the mob closet. You know what I'm saying? So, it shit could happen. But that wasn't what was going on. Okay? And you should trust your people. And given where it's coming from, that would have made me be like, forget that. He's just trying to get to me. And you let Eddie get to you. And I just don't understand that. Okay? And then going to tell Kelly, you know what? I'm sick of your shit. Just come get your son. I said, wait a minute. What did Kelly do to you? And so she go over there to get justice or whatever. And um, once she got through or whatever, Lucian telling her, you ain't even have to act like that. It was like, listen, I talk to her. We'll talk. We'll talk. You won't let me talk to you or whatever. I, and I need to talk to her. Okay. He was like, well, you need to talk to her. Then talk. I talk to her when I'm calm. I said, calm from what? You're the one that made a fool out of yourself. You should feel real stupid, Natalie. Who wrote... Mm, Tyler did this. Let me stop. Um. Anyway. Bitch, we all know. Let me stop. Um, anyway, she doing all this theatrics and then, you know, uh, whatever. Kelly was over there before, um, she went and got justice. She told Terrell to get the fuck out. Terrell was confused as to why they let Randall stay out there. It was like, obviously he a bad guy. Terrell is on this, we can be happy again. You know, we was once in love. We was once homegirls, homeboys and all that shit. We was doing all this stuff. We was yin yanging and all that. You know, we was, we was just, we was, we was tight like that. You know what I'm saying? We was tight like rubber bands, bitch. Okay, come on. We can get back like that. Kelly said, listen, boy. I'm finna talk to Justice, and you can take your ass out somewhere, okay? And be gone for an hour. We ain't about to do all that, all right? And so, he goes over to Pam's house. You know, is her name Pam or Pat? Which one is it? Because one of them is Pat and sisters, or Pam and this bitch the nurse, okay? That was with our uh, Beyonce cousin, okay? Um, Angie. She was over there. He went over there trying to, uh, you know, kick it over there for a minute. She said... No, girl. No, sir. This is not what was going to happen, okay? Um, Kelly, she came back. He came back. Kelly said, why don't you go over there to Leslie, the girl that he was fucking around with when she went uh, in her house when he when she came in there. He said, that's cold. That's cold. He left for a second, came back, and, you know, at this point in time, Justice was already in there. You know, Justice was in his feelings, of course, because his mom has been gone for a minute, uh, a few days and people, you know, he get into fights or whatever because kids can be cruel. You know, they hear their parents talking and, of course, they're going to repeat what was being said and, you know, use it for some reason to taunt the other person, the kids or whatever that's going through the situation, which I never understand. Why would you kick somebody while they're down instead of uplifting them? But 
I blame the parents, you know. Um, and so at this point, when Terrell comes in there, he's like, Ma, who is this? And then she was like, This is your father. But I thought you told me that I said, What she tell you that he was gone? You ain't know where he was. And then, you know, she he was like, Bitch, at first Justice was confused. Then Justice started giving all types of attitude and flavor. Listen, Justice said, Well, where you been at? If you my daddy, where you been at? He was like, Listen, I was in jail. And when he said jail, Justice looked like he rolled his eyes and he went. <sighs> mm. I said, "What that that whole expression meant?" Typical. <laughs> that way, if you can sum it up in a word, typical. That's what it meant, okay? But you know, he was like, "I want to get to know you," and he was truthful. He said, "I feel confused," and um, you know, Terrell was like, "I want to get to know you." He was like, "Well, my mama got my schedule, but if I got some free time downtown, you can come over, or whatever." And he was like, "Okay, I love you, son." Justice was like, "I mean, I love you too," and Terrell said, "No, you ain't gotta say that." Until you get there. I said, listen. Okay, Terrell, I just might like you. B, I just might like you. Moving on from that. Let's get into this last story. Okay. God damn. Mika. Mika and Esperanza. Now, Esperanza gets on the phone when she finally goes back in the house. And the first person she called is Stevens. And not the cops. Okay. I just don't understand it. But all right. Um, you know, I mean, just because, you know, Eddie is crazy or whatever, I still would have called the cops first, okay? Um, when it comes to a situation, girl, <laughs> I was about to say something and I just said, no, Ashley, just, mm. I would have called the cops. In this situation, I would have called the cops, okay? Because at this point in time, we are dealing with a kidnapping. And she gets on the phone and basically told Steven that, you know, uh, she went to go look for Esperanza and she think, I mean, look for Mika, she not there. And not telling him that, you know, she did, I think she did say a van pulled up, you know, she wasn't in her room or whatever, then the van was outside and, you know, he it pulled out, you know, Eddie overhears some stuff happening and next thing you know, Esperanza called Eddie and telling him, where's my daughter and she's gone and all this stuff or whatever. And it almost seems as if Esperanza is working on the fact or, or, or the premise that Mika left on her own. And I'm sitting here like, how are you working that way? And how is it coming off that way to me? And I know it came off that way to y'all on the su on a, a few way that she was acting because she said she never really, she said that she was looking for her. And then, you know, I thought she just left or something like that. And I was like, girl, what you mean? You heard her screaming. Ah, hell, ah, ah. she was out there screaming. Now, was I the only one that heard the screaming when she was leaving and then the van pulled off? I said, Esperanza, stop being dumb, you know? So, of course, Steven is there to the rescue, you know, trying to help her out or whatever, saying it's an FBI case now and all this stuff. Then, of course, Eddie come up in there. Girl, they get into this shouting match. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Mika, Mika, Mika. I said, I ain't never seen Eddie move like this, okay? He really was like shook. That's his baby girl. That's the only thing that he loved, you know? And so at this point, you know, him and Esperanza are going back and forth. And Esperanza said, did you have something to do with this? Let me find out that you had to take my girl, take my baby girl, okay? I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up, all right? This was going to happen. He said, you better get your hands up on my face. You better get your hands by my face. Don't you fucking touch me. Boom. Now, did he really hear her? Because Stephen said that he hit her. All I saw him, and I ain't, I ain't feel like, because it's, it's Esperanza and Eddie. I really didn't give a shit. And all I saw him push her. I know he pushed her real hard. So, did he really hear her? At that point in time, Stevens got pissed off because that's his boo, okay? And that's a woman. You don't put your hands on a woman any type of way like that, and she didn't do nothing to you, Okay. And we in a hiding situation. They can't stand each other. Stevens took this as a chance to beat Eddie's ass. Or attempt to. Okay? I don't think neither one of them won the fight. It was quite equal because they both was beating each other's asses. Okay? And you know, at this point, Esperanza get a book and start beating Eddie with it too. And I was just like, girl, whatever. She said, let me find out she gone because of some shit that you do. Go find my daughter. And she had to break the shit up by throwing hot coffee on Eddie. It got on um Stevens a little bit, but majority on Eddie. Go find my daughter. Go find my daughter. Eddie gets a phone call from Larry or whatever or calling Larry trying to find out where the fuck his daughter at. And was like, you took some stuff from a friend of mine, some very powerful people or whatever. Now, if you return that... It, uh, um, you'll get your daughter back. That's all it is. He was like, listen, um, you gonna return all my money? 
Okay, cool. You gonna return my money, okay? And um, meet me in my house in an hour. An hour? He was like, that's the time frame that I'm working on, bro. An hour, you know? And you know, in the midst of that hour, he goes from the office over there to visit Randall. He goes to um, whatever. Um, also, Steven's trying to calm Esperanza down. And, you know, uh, Esperanza gets a phone call from some the kidnappers basically saying that Eddie owes them a lot of money. And as soon as they get the money back by midnight, they get Mika back and all this stuff. So she pissed and scared and everything. And so Eddie was looking for Larry. Larry is in this parking garage after he comes from, you know, Randall's house. Eddie is in his parking garage. I mean, Larry is in his parking garage and he, you know, putting something in the trunk. He closing it up. Next thing you know, Eddie just so happens to know that he's in there. So I'm like, was you trailing him this whole time? Or how did you know that he was in that parking garage? Girl, he turned that car on and he rammed. He rammed and pent Larry up at that um in the back. Okay, pent his car like this. Had him in the middle. I said, oh my God, it reminded me of <laughs> that scene from Scary Movie 3. <laughs> When Charlie seen White was picked up in the car, and it was like the car is the only thing that was keeping him, keeping her alive. Girl, he kept on. Oh, he was like, "Where my daughter at?" I said, "Larry, not fat, kinky Larry. Don't do that to him. But he deserved. But don't do that to him. But he deserved." Girl, that preview for next week when he was gunning the engine. Girl, I said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, Larry ain't gonna be able to walk no more if he make it out of this." But that's is loving you is wrong. You guys tell me how you um uh felt about it. I will be here tomorrow for the oval. Um, I hope you guys be able to find some type of solace, some type of peace, some way to decompress because we have all been going through it. And I know it's been a lot and I'm just hoping that my videos can help, you know, escape from reality just a little bit. But um, you guys be safe and I'll see y'all later. Peace.